Let's start by talking about the importance of plasma glucose. In humans, it is critical that plasma glucose is maintained within the normal range, 80 to 110 milligrams per 100 milliliters, or 0.8 to 1.1 milligrams per milliliter. If there is too little glucose, the brain is deprived of its main energy source, which can very quickly lead to coma or death. If there is too much plasma glu glucose, it leads to endothelial cell damage, dehydration due to diuresis, which is increased or excessive production of urine, and very high plasma glucose can increase the plasma osmolarity, which will dehydrate the CNS and lead to hyperglycemic coma. In the rest of this video, we will be discussing the hormone regulation of plasma glucose, focusing on hormones, insulin, glucagon, epinephrine, cortisol, and growth hormone, as well as some other hormones that regulate the production and secretion of these hormones. Two of these hormones are secreted from cells in the pancreas. Insulin is secreted by the beta cells, and glucagon is secreted by the alpha cells. Two of the other hormones are secreted from the adrenal gland above the kidney. The one we will focus on here is epinephrine, which is secreted from the medulla. Insulin is the primary hormone responsible for lowering glucose levels after a meal. It stimulates cells to transport glucose into the cell from the extracellular fluid. Both glucagon and epinephrine are the primary hormones for increasing the plasma glucose in circumstances of fasting, stress, exercise, or starvation. They stimulate the liver to release glucose from glycogen and to convert lactic acid, glycerol, and certain amino acids to glucose through gluconeogenesis. Cortisol, secreted from the adrenal cortex, and growth hormone, secreted from the anterior pituitary gland, both suppress the transport of glucose into some cells by decreasing the effects of insulin. Also, I just spelled gluconeogenesis wrong twice, so let's correct that on this slide. Now let's move through the anterior pituitary adrenal axis. This just focuses on one specific pathway that regulates blood glucose levels through hormone control. In this pathway, corticotropin-releasing hormone is released from the hypothalamus of the brain and stimulates the release of adrenocorticotropic hormone from the anterior pituitary gland. This hormone will stimulate the release of cortisol from the adrenal cortex, which will then in turn help increase blood glucose through protein breakdown and gluconeogenesis. It is important to note that the increase of cortisol creates a negative feedback loop by repressing the activity of the earlier parts of the pathway. So now when we look at high and low levels of glucose, we can understand how they affect levels of different groups of hormones. High glucose levels in the blood increase insulin activity, whereas low blood glucose encourages activity of other hormones and represses insulin secretion. It is also good to note that high blood glucose levels also establish a negative feedback in the anterior pituitary adrenal axis. Defects in the regulation of glucose in the body can be seen in disorders such as Cushing's syndrome. Cushing's syndrome is also known as hypercortisolism, meaning that it occurs from excess cortisol in the body. One type of this disease can occur from a tumor forming on the adrenal gland. Some symptoms include what they call moon face, which is when the face becomes round and red, fat pads on the back called a buffalo hump, thin limbs but weight gain on the trunk, and red stretch marks. Treatments of this disease include reduction of steroid use, surgery to remove the cortisol-releasing tumor, radiation, and medication.